The first of our scary stories in the dark comes from England. It's called Looking for a Ghost. Running along the footpath, fire in his feet, came Sammy Scarlet. He ran on his toes, leaping as he ran, so that he seemed to dance and spin through the twilight like a grey, tumbling bird learning to fly. Sammy leapt as he ran to keep himself brave. He was going to a haunted house. That evening, he was going to see a ghost for the first time in his life. The haunted house was along a city street. It was the last house left in the street, falling to pieces in the middle of a garden of weeds. The glass in the windows was broken, and some of them were crossed over with boards. There was a tall fence round it, but tumbling down. As he ran, Sammy thought about his conversation with the man from the shop at the corner who had told him about the house. They'll put a bulldozer through that spooky old place soon. It's a valuable section, a commercial section. Haunted? Well, they say there's a ghost, but it only comes out in the evenings, after the shops have shut up and most people have gone home. Well, I've never seen it, and I'm not hanging around here after 5.30 just to watch some ghost. Only a little one, too, they say, a twilight ghost. Suddenly, Sammy felt a cold breath on the back of his neck, cold lips whispering in his ear. Now, as he ran swiftly through the early evening, Sammy knew he had chosen his time well. It was just light enough for his mother not to worry about him, yet just dark enough for a small, cold ghost to appear. He ran and leapt to keep away the fear, which ran beside him like a chilly, pale-eyed dog. Just a quick prowl round. If I go back now, I'm a coward. I've promised myself to see a ghost, and I'm gonna see a ghost. At last, Sammy neared the end of the street, and there, out of the shadows, loomed the haunted house, waiting for him. There was the tumble-down fence, there was the gate, and there, by the gate, something moved. Sammy jumped, but it was only a little girl playing with a ball. She was very thin, with a pale, serious face and long brown hair. Though she did not smile at Sammy, she looked friendly and interested. Her heavy shoes made her legs look even thinner, and her dress was too big for her. She had a sort of old-fashioned look. Hello. I thought no one ever came here in the evening. I've come to see the ghost. What ghost? The ghost that haunts his house. Is this house haunted? I suppose it looks a bit haunted. It's got cobwebs on it and thistles in the garden. Aren't you frightened of the ghost, then? I'm not scared of ghosts. They can be pretty scary to some people, but I don't know how it is. Somehow they don't scare me. I'm going through the fence to take a look. Why don't you try this gate? That's funny. When I looked at the gate earlier, it was locked. I'll come with you. My name is Belinda and I would like to see ghosts too. I don't think you better. Ghosts can be pretty horrible, you know. Sharp teeth, claws, and cackling laughs. Bony too. There's nothing wrong with being bony. I'm bony. If it's scary to be bony, I might frighten the ghost. Anyway, the gate is open, so I can go in by myself if I want to. Belinda stepped into the garden and Sammy followed her. Half cross because she was intruding in his private adventure, half pleased to have company. As he came through the gate, Sammy felt a cold breath on the back of his neck. Turning around slowly, he saw nothing. Perhaps it was just a little cool wind sliding into the empty garden with them. It's a garden of thistle down and dandelions, a garden all for birds and beetles and ghosts. The lawn is almost as tall as my shoulder. A ghost could easily be in that long grass and just rise up beside us like smoke. Sammy glanced thoughtfully at the grass, but no smoke appeared. In fact, it was very still. He could hear cars out on the main road, but 
They seemed like dreams of sound, tiny flies. They walked up the brick path and stood on the front steps of the haunted house. The whole veranda was sagging beneath crumbling posts. You'd feel cruel just standing on this veranda. It looks so limp and sick. Cruelty to verandas? Stand on it lightly, Sammy, and we'll go inside. I think a ghost would be inside, don't you? The door will be locked, won't it? But how did you know my name? You look like a Sammy. She pushed the door and it slowly opened like a black mouth opening to suck them into its shadows. Uh, I might stay out here. The floor could c cave in or something. You don't have to be afraid. It's just an old empty house. An old house is made of good wood. Belinda slid through the dark door and vanished out of sight. Sammy had to follow her. It was so dark inside and dim and dusty, he couldn't see anything at first. Then a figure started moving slowly towards him. It's a ghost! It isn't a ghost. It's a looking glass on a tall cupboard at the end of the hall. And it's your own reflection that's frightening you. As Sammy blinked, he saw that what Belinda had said was true. They walked cautiously up the dark hall towards the looking glass, and Sammy rubbed his finger across it. It waved back. Then suddenly... <gasps> it's only a cupboard door. Come upstairs. They were nice once, these stairs. They used to be polished every day. How can you tell? They're smooth under the dust. Smooth with feet walking and hands polishing. That was a long time ago. How can you see your way up those stairs? It's so dark. There's enough light. Sammy followed her. Suddenly, a hand, soft and silent as the shadows, laid its silken fingers across his face. The ghost! Cobwebs. Only cobwebs. Sammy's fingers, stiff with fright, touched his face. Cobwebs. So it is. Sammy stumbled and scrambled up after her onto the landing, where there was a window boarded over. And peeping through its cracks, they glimpsed the thistly garden and empty street way below. There used to be grass there. Grass and cows. But that was a long time ago. Come through this door, Sammy. Sammy didn't want to be left behind, so he followed her through the door into a small room. Here, some boards on the windows had partly slipped away, and through these gaps, the evening sunlight filtered through, brightening the walls, striping the ceiling. An old green curtain hung there in shreds, and beside it stood a broken rocking chair, and there, sitting in it, was a doll. It was a very old doll, but somehow it looked as if it had just been put down for a moment and was waiting for someone to come back and play with it. Sammy looked over to the doll and around the room and then out through the window. There's no ghost here and it's getting late. I've got to be going. Somehow, the ghost no longer seemed to be of importance. Sammy had the strange feeling that he would still remember the spooky atmosphere of this silent, tumbling house and its wild garden long after he had ever stopped thinking about ghosts. They climbed back down the stairs, and this time Sammy did not jump at the cobwebs. As they went past the looking glass, he creaked the cupboard door on purpose. This time the sound didn't frighten him. It seemed gentle and complaining, not fierce or angry. He only wants to be left alone. Yes, I think you're right. That's how it sounded anyway. As they walked down to the end of the hall, Sammy turned to wave goodbye to his reflection in the looking glass. The reflection waved back at him from the end of a long tunnel of shadow. Outside, the evening darkened. Stars were showing. Ah, oh, no ghosts. Will you be coming back some other night to look for the ghost? I don't think so. I don't really believe in ghosts. I just thought there might be one here. So I had a look once and there's not one. So that's enough. He turned to run off back home, but something made him stop, and he looked sharply at Belinda. Did you see your reflection in the looking glass? I don't remember seeing your reflection. Everyone has a reflection, don't they? 
You went up the stairs first. Why didn't you brush the cobwebs away? I'm not as tall as you. Sammy peered at her, waiting for her to say more. Just for a moment, he felt that same chilly breeze touching the back of his neck again. No ghosts. No such thing as ghosts. Without even saying goodbye, he raced off home, rockets in the heels of his shoes. Belinda watched him go. The question is whether he would recognise a ghost supposing he saw one. The little girl went back through the gate and locked it carefully after her. She was already faint and hazy in the evening light, and as she pushed the bolt home, she disappeared entirely.